today. No two circumstances are exactly alike, but I know you've heard from at least two former Olympians. One is Dan Jansen, who told us the other night about how he reached out to you and shared the experience of having to compete on the very day that his sister died. When I got Dan's email, uh, it was really special to me because I had heard him speak uh, at a COC event last year, and his speech really inspired me then, and I never thought that something like that would happen to me. Those things happen to other people, but mm -hmm. not you. And when you hear uh, stories like that, uh, you understand. And I think a lot of those messages gave me strength to keep in the competition. I recall a story from the 1992 Barcelona Olympics of Canadian synchronized swimmer Sylvie Frechette. Her fiancé committed suicide shortly before she had to compete. And then, a coincidence, in a seminar leading up to these Olympics, you saw her speak, never imagining that there would be similar circumstances that you would have to cope with. Yes, I imagine uh, last year, last year, right before going to the World Championships, uh, I went to hear Sylvie speak in Montreal, and I told myself after hearing uh, of her boyfriend's suicide that I could never have competed under those circumstances, and I told myself she's so strong. I. I could never imagine myself doing that and going through a similar situation here and having Sylvie here talk to me, being there for me and a lot of other athletes reached out to me whose similar uh, situation happened and that, that really helped me and I told myself that if they, they could do it, I could do it too and I really understood what they were saying that mm -hmm. when such a terrible event like that happens, you find the strength for that love person. You want to show them, you want to, to prove them that you can be strong and my mom would have wanted me to, to compete and go for that medal. You retained uh, some sense of humor despite these tragic circumstances. Uh, in a press conference you said after detailing how much you loved your mom and, and what an effect she had on shaping you as a person and a skater, you also said, but you know, come on, she was a perfectionist. Sometimes she can be a pain in the butt. <laughs> Yes, and I mean, um, that's what we try to do. Uh, my father is here with my first coach since, that I have uh, since I was uh, three years old skating. Uh, and with Manon, it was good to have all that support. And we were at dinner the other night just remembering things that she would do. And yeah, if she would have been here yesterday after my program, she, of course she would have been so happy, the proudest mom out there. But she would still ask me, what happened with that triple flip? What went wrong with it? Mm -hmm. And you know, no matter what I do in life from now on, I still have that in me. And uh, she learned to, you know, not content myself uh, with being average. Just always give my best and being the best as I can be. Kim Yuna really dazzled with her performance in winning the gold medal last night. With all due respect to a deep field, is she head and shoulders above the rest? Oh, yes. Last night, uh, Yuna Kim was really strong, uh, really, she's a really great skater, one of the best I've ever seen and um, my mom also taught me that, uh, you know, you compete but I could always recognize the qualities of my competitors and in a way that I could never berate myself either, so just always be in that middle zone and even though last night wasn't my best performance, I made a mistake in that triple flip and uh, a couple of things could, could have been sharper, I was still proud because what I gave out there was myself. I fought for everything, every point I could get, and I know that my mom is proud right now.